Our next topic in chapter 19 is transverse waves and longitudinal waves. I have a simple diagram to the right that might help us remember the difference between these two. It's all about wave motion represented by the big arrow and vibrations represented by the small arrows. You can see that in one case it's uh, perpendicular in the case of transverse wave and it's parallel in the case of longitudinal waves. So your notes could say something like this, that for transverse waves, you have a side-to-side -side vibration in a direction perpendicular to the wave's motion. You know, you're probably like me, you learn by example. Here is an example of a transverse wave. What you can do is uh, imagine you have a rope and you create a disturbance up and down, and you create this crest that uh, propagates along the rope. And you'll notice that uh, you wiggled it up and down this way, but the wave moved to the right. There's your perpendicular example. So waves on a rope, transverse waves. Water waves are also good examples of transverse waves. Here the black dots represent water molecules. And if you keep your eye on one black dot, you'll notice that it goes up and down. Whereas if you watch the wave crest, it moves toward the right. So up and down to the right. There's your perpendicular example. Water waves are good examples of transverse waves. You know what, that sounds like a good multiple choice question. All right, uh, another example of a transverse wave is a stringed instrument. I think I have a video, let's see if I can find that. Oh, here it is, okay. So what this person did was they took a cell phone and they put it inside of a, uh, well, they put it inside of a, an acoustical guitar. And they brought it out in the bright sunlight so they could get enough light inside of an acoustic guitar. And it kind of has this um, strobe-like effect where you can definitely see that the waves are perpendicular to their, well, the vibrations uh, are, you know, left to right and the waves are going up and down. I'm going to have to try this out someday. Okay, back over here to the next type would be Longitudinal waves, here the keyword is parallel. Back and forth vibrations in a direction parallel to the wave's motions. I learned by example, here's an example, um, sound waves. So we have a column or a tube, and in there we have air. And at the end of the tube, we have a membrane or a flat surface, which is moving back and forth. Uh, what do we call that in class? Uh, simple harmonic motion and it's creating this bunching up of the molecules within there within that uh, tube and if you watch an individual black dot you'll see that it just goes left and right but if you watch one of those compression waves it moves toward the right so this is a good example of um, a longitudinal wave sounds are sound wave sound waves are longitudinal waves parallel vibration to direction of uh, travel Another example of a longitudinal wave or the sound waves that you would, you would have in a wind instrument, um, whether it be a curved instrument or a very simple organ pipe, which I'll show you in a moment. Before I get to the organ pipe, though, I wanted to show you this figure that you have a long tube similar to an organ pipe, and I'm creating a sound at one end using a tuning fork. I wanted to show you this because here we have that frozen moment in time where there's a bunching up of the particles here, higher density and then lower density here. I show you this because in the case of a transverse wave, you measure crest to crest for wavelength. But in the case of a longitudinal wave, you measure compression to compression for wavelength. So this is wavelength for a longitudinal wave, whereas for a transverse wave, it's crest to crest. This is what I mean by organ pipe. I'm talking about organ pipes that are using pipe organs. And uh, so basically you have these tubes of various length and if you, uh, various links rather, and if you uh, pass um, air through them at uh, high pressure, then uh, it will resonate and create a sound that is dependent on its length. So the longer the uh, organ pipes, the, the lower the frequency that it, uh, it resonates naturally. I think I have an organ pipe over here. Let's see if you can recognize this song. Oh, that was a little too easy. I should have 
cut the movie. I should have cut the video in a little bit differently. Okay. Oh well. I bet y'all got that one really easily. I, there's a kind of um, material that can have both transverse and longitudinal waves. So think about which one of these is transverse and which one's longitudinal. Uh, this is obviously a slinky, well not obviously, but it's a slinky, uh, laying down on a flat surface. You're looking at it from above on a tabletop. It's fixed at one end and you're creating a disturbance by moving the slinky back and forth this way. And the coils bunch up here to create that compression region here and here. There's the rarefied region. Compression to compression, wavelength, just like in the case of a transverse wave, you wiggle it this way instead of that way, and then the wave uh, propagates perpendicular to this direction of vibration. Trough to trough, in this case, is wavelength. So multiple choice questions, when you're seeing those, remember that a sound wave is a longitudinal wave, and a water wave is a transverse wave. Slinkies can have both types of waves on them, and so can the Earth. So the solid material and the liquid material that makes up the Earth can actually have both longitudinal and transverse waves propagate through them. Uh, geologists call them P waves uh, for pressure or push and pull, or they call them uh, S waves, which means shear or side-to-side -side waves. And the thing that uh, the geologists realized is that when an, earthquake hap when an earthquake happens at one location on the Earth, it's detected differently around the surface of the Earth with seismometers. What they find is that uh, pressure waves, or these P waves, will propagate not only through the solid material, but also through the liquid material as well. But uh, seismometers um, find that, um, like if you're in this area right here, you would detect both S and P waves because the P waves can travel through the solid. But the S waves, they're trying to wiggle this way. That's not, um, the liquid does not really allow that to propagate. So um, you'd only in this area would detect just a P wave coming through um, from there to there. What I'm trying to say is that we know what the internal structure of the earth is like by monitoring these natural earthquakes that occur. Um, so the seismometer picks up signals of various types. You do the computer modeling, and that's how we know what the interior of the Earth is like. Not by drilling, but by monitoring seismic waves going through the Earth. If we're going to learn what the interior of the Moon or Mars is like, we'll have to do the same thing. We'll have to monitor uh, moon quakes or Mars quakes in order to determine what their interior is like. Okay, on to the next topic.